before we get started, can I have you guys all smile for the camera so I can take a screenshot? Or you can wave whatever you want. One, two, three. Great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Hi everyone joining us. We're gonna get started in a few minutes. Um, as a reminder, this session is going to be recorded and it'll be sent to everyone via email after the event. Once we get started, if you have any questions at all, you can drop them in the Q&A box. So we will get started in just a few minutes. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna give a couple minutes for folks to join this um, virtual panel discussion and then we will go ahead and get started. Thank you again. Hi everyone, welcome to Less Busy Work, More Teamwork, Maximizing Team Collaboration, presented by Asana. As a reminder, this session is going to be recorded and we will send this out via email after the event has concluded. 
My name is Kimberly. I'll be your moderator today, and I also help run Asana's community program and create events like this just for people like you. Thanks for being a part of our Asana community, and we have a great agenda for you this afternoon for our Chicago audience. We're going to hear from some local business leaders across a variety of sizes and types of businesses, talk about how they're keeping their teams moving forward, learn their best practices for working together, and this is particularly in today's changing world. So we're really excited to have you join us today, and we hope you're able to leave this event with some really awesome, actionable things to take back with you. Great, so this event is part of our 2020 tour. Um, we're going around the world, both virtually and in person, meeting people just like you. I'm so excited to connect with our customers, share ideas around work management, and then of course share some Asana tips as well along the way. Thank you so much for being here today and being part of Asana's productivity movement. It's a community and we're glad that you're a part of it. So to go through everything that's happening this afternoon, we're gonna share a few words with you about Asana to start off. And then we're going to get to know those of us or those of you joining us as well. We're going to then bring up our panel of experts to share their ideas. And then finally, we'll leave some time at the end for your questions. You can put any questions that you have at any time into the Q&A box uh, and definitely do that. We'll, get, we'll have some time at the very end for questions. So let's go ahead and kick things off. To start off, each of us has to get our work done, right? That sounds familiar to me. But for most of us, the bulk of our time is spent on just about everything other than work. <laughs> At Asana, we call this work about work. We also kn we know this problem, but you probably did not measure this. Uh, luckily, McKenzie actually did measure this. They found out that most, uh, almost 60% of our time is doing work about work. And that work is processing emails, spending time in meetings, and trying to hunt down information. I don't know about you, but this does sound familiar to me. When we talk about achieving our best work and avoiding the work about work, it's clear that best performing teams have a clear mission or purpose and that they are trying to achieve that. From there, they build clear objectives. Their objectives are specific and measurable and they show a clear forward progress towards their mission. These objectives then get broken down into projects. And projects are bodies of work that teams come together to work on. Each project contains tasks the individual units of work that team members perform. There's usually a lot of tasks, and if you use Asana, you're definitely familiar with that word. Most of our work about work is driven by a lack of clarity of who is doing which tasks by when. And then, of course, how those tasks kind of ladder up to the team's bigger objectives and mission. At Asana, we call this the pyramid of clarity with clarity of plan, purpose, and responsibility. When you have it, that's when the magic happens, and that's when work starts to really feel effortless, and I think we can all kind of get to that clarity together. Asana is designed to help you plan and manage your work from the big goals down to who's responsible for doing what by when, so that you and your team are always in the know. Whether you're planning complicated projects or working on single tasks, Asana makes it easy to track who's doing what by when. Asana also helps you monitor all of your organization's plans, initiatives, and objectives in one spot through portfolios. And that's kind of what we're seeing right here on this slide. You can also look after your most important asset, your team and your team members. With workload, you can promote balance and avoid burnout by being proactive in, in capacity planning and rebalancing of work. With 82% of workers feeling overworked, balance is a key area that teams can look at in order to reduce work about work and make sure tasks aren't falling through the cracks. We're helping millions of teams in more than 195 countries around the world achieve their best work. And that's where all of you come in. These are some of our amazing customers. And I wanted to take a moment to spotlight a, a couple that you might actually be familiar with or have heard of before. To start off, Scripps Lifestyle Studios manages the video development for various platforms and brands such as HGTV and the Food Network. They ensure the best production and distribution for all of their clients and audiences. And they reach an audience of about, of about 493 million each month. <laughs> 
and a total of 19 billion video views in 2017. That is a lot of cakes. <laughs> With Asana, they've streamlined creation of 600 original videos for digital distribution per month, and they create production templates to ensure hundreds of tasks are executed consistently. They're able to have full visibility into project status for team members. One of the biggest features they use in Asana are our templates. Templates turn everyone into mini project manager managers. <laughs> They've been a team-wide cultural shift in how people manage their workflows. Instead of relying on one person to oversee every task and deliverable, every team member is empowered to own their responsibilities and drive the process forward. This autonomy helps in delivering that full visibility, as well as allowing team members to facilitate process reviews and improve how they work as often as they like just by updating a template. Of course, Bobby Brown is also using templates. They were founded in 1991 in New York City by makeup artist Bobby Brown. Their products are currently sold in over 73 countries and they have 5,200 makeup artists around the world. The Bobby Brown Creative Operations team uses Asana for campaign management. They're able to better track granular details by determining their needs and timelines and inputting that information in for full team visibility. They also replicate success with, you guessed it, templates. Copying projects saves time and helps the team iterate on their production process as well as lessons learned from every campaign launch. This approach is definitely less manual than alternatives like Excel, and Asana is great for cross-functional communication, especially within the company. Communicating with, within Asana helps team members focus on the work at hand, as opposed to managing an overwhelming amount of email that had previously existed. And I think we can all definitely relate to drowning in emails, so that one definitely hits home. All right, so now that you've gotten to meet a little bit uh, or, or you've gotten to learn a little bit about some Asana customers. Um, I also wanted to uh, hear from you because experts are all around us. Everyone in this webinar right now is an expert in how you do your own work. So I'd love to turn your attention to the chat if possible, and let's go ahead and get to know each other. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box and share your current company and maybe how you're staying productive, especially if you're working from home. And I'm going to open up my chat really quick to see who's here with us today. Hi. Oh, we're getting some people. Let's see. And you can also turn this to um, all panelists and attendees too. Great. We have University of Chicago Medicine Department of Surgery. Wonderful. I'm, I think a lot of people are gonna be joining us from Chicago today, which is really exciting, but if you're not from Chicago, definitely let us know. Awesome, hi Crystal, hi Mari. And I also wanted to mention, of course, I was supposed to be in Chicago for this panel and I've never been to Chicago before. I'm coming to you from San Francisco right now. And there are a lot of people in San Francisco who love Chicago. I feel like this is like a normal thing that I hear about often is how much people love Chicago. So I was really looking forward to visiting Chicago for the first time. So I'm adding to this as well. I need to know, where's the best deep dish in the Chicago area? Please add that in the chat as well. I'm gonna go ahead and get out a notepad. I need to take down some notes. Oh, okay. Pick. Pequods, am I saying that right? Am I completely killing that? <laughs> Pequods. Pequods, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of votes for that one. Oh yes, seconding, okay. I'm, I'm writing that one down. Oh, Lou's, okay. Lou Malnats, Malnats. I love it. Oh wow, we have I'm someone joining from Uruguay too. Gino's East. I'm now getting very hungry. It's lunchtime. This is, oh yeah, there we go. Emma threw a, threw a thumbs up for Gino's. <laughs> Hello, Adam from Green Bay. Great, all right, keep them coming. I love seeing all of this. <laughs> all right, so I am going to go ahead and close out my Asana project dedicated to Chicago deep dish suggestions which I do have now. I'm putting those down. And I'm excited. I'm going to pivot over to our fantastic lineup of panelists we have from the Chicago area joining us today. So let me introduce them. 
Um, we have Elise at American Marketing Association, Emma from the Lincoln Park Zoo, and Joanna from the American Medical Association. Um, unfortunately, one of our panelists is not with us today. That was Lauren from G2. Um, but we're really excited to have this wonderful lineup of um, women joining us today from the Chicago area. So let's start off by having each of our panelists introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about the work that they do. Emma, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'd love to. So I am currently working at the Lincoln Park Zoo. I hope many of you from Chicago have been there or whenever we get the chance to travel again, those of you from other cities, please pay us a visit. Lincoln Park Zoo is one of only a few free zoos in the country and I'm proud to have been a part of their learning department for seven years. As the learning exploration manager, I help pilot new programs for ways to connect audiences to our work that can range from field trips for elementary school kids to high school internships, as well as community programs. But the common thread running through all my programs is that they're all new initiatives to start. That's great, thank you so much. And I am adding the Lincoln Park Zoo to my places of, uh, to go when I visit Chicago. I'm very excited, it's going to happen someday. <laughs> all right, Elise, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, hello everyone. Um, I'm Elise Melendez with American Marketing Association. I'm the marketing manager there. My day to day is primarily focused on our events and training portfolio that serves professional marketers and uh, networking and professional development needs. Uh, currently pivoting to a lot of online learning like we're all doing today. So this is great. Um, I also am the executive director of Motivated Movers, which is a dance program. Uh, and I only bring it up because I use Asana for all of my jobs, including my own household management. And yes, my husband loves it. Uh, so <laughs> Asana is a great tool that I use uh, to do many, many things, um, both at AMA and beyond. And yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> great. And I have to say, I also use Asana for a lot of small household things. It's great for shopping lists. <laughs> List, financial management, travel yeah. plans, it's all good. <laughs> Everything. I love it. All right, Joanna, did you want to go ahead and introduce yourself too? Oh, you're on mute. Uh-oh, there we go. I'm Joanna Russell. I work at the American Medical Association. I started as a project manager on the UX team working on product development and I branched out to do process improvement. So I map out everybody's current processes, identify places where they can improve and then launch the new process. Correct. And I'm in the process of building out a team too, if anyone's looking for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And very awesome to know, especially right now. Um, a lot of people are kind of looking around. Mm -hmm. um, great. And then just a quick run through, just so we know kind of who's with us today um, and where you'll be speaking, uh, which viewpoint you'll be speaking from. Um, Emma, are you an individual contributor or are you a manager? And then if you're a manager, how many team members are you managing? Yeah, I'm a manager and I manage four individuals. Within the whole learning department, we have 35 people spread across six teams. So I manage one of them. Great. And then Elise, same question for you. Yeah, so I'm a manager. I don't actually manage anyone directly on our team of five, uh, but I do manage all of our partners from design to photography to videography. Fantastic. And then Joanna, you said you were building out a team. Are you currently managing anyone right now? <laughs> nope, I have two openings. Awesome. 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 Yeah. I'll have to share that too in the chat too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. So I wanted to quickly talk about um, just the state of things right now and remote working, uh, which is the new normal for many, uh, especially in the recent months. According to the Anatomy of Work remote team survey that we recently launched, um, I think it was last week actually we launched that, uh, this new normal Instantly, 60% of global employees are working different hours since shifting to remote work. This change, among others, has led to major differences in how we actually get work done. For instance, compared to pre-COVID, almost two-thirds of full-time knowledge workers have increased their use of collaboration tools since working from home. So I want to talk a little bit with our panelists about working remotely and how they are kind of adjusting to do so. All right. So, oops, let's see here, there we go. Um, oh, I'm so sorry, give me one second. I'm having a little bit 
of an issue right now with this slide. Okay, great. Um, so I would love to know, Emma, if you want to start us off, um, is your team currently working remotely and what's that like for you? Yeah, so obviously to keep the zoo running, there are many departments of essential workers who are going on grounds to provide the care for our animals, but the learning department is working remotely because the audiences that we usually serve aren't able to come on zoo grounds. So far, we've been sticking to our usual working hours, and we've been conducting most of our recurring meetings over Zoom, though we have started to have a few more conversations about how can we be connecting asynchronously because so many people have kids at home to take care of or family members who are in need of care. And one exciting thing that I think has come from this remote working is we're having to think through all of our programs and what can still happen digitally or remotely versus what needs to get postponed or canceled. Mm -hmm. So we have a smaller list of projects than we usually do, but that has turned into a lot of great cross team collaboration. So while our super popular summer camp program is usually facilitated by just one rock star team, We've shifted to a virtual format for our camp families and we put out an all call for contributors. So we've had members from across all of our different teams leading story time sessions, answering questions about animals. So I think we're enjoying some of the perks of working from home and working together in new ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I love that too, especially when you're talking about a workplace that is so um, in person and hands on as well. It's really interesting to hear about that shift. Um, I'm going to jump over to Joanna as well. Um, I, I believe your team is currently working from home as well. And I was wondering what the biggest challenge you and your team are facing right now with working from home and what you're kind of doing to overcome that. So I would say initially the biggest challenge was communication across teams. Uh, luckily, we rolled out Asana earlier in the year, so the email team and the paid ad team and the news team, everyone was on Asana. Mm -hmm. So we were able to create a board just dedicated to COVID because AMA does a lot of work with COVID-19. So we have the centralized board with all the teams um, united so we can keep track of all the communications and assets going on across the company. Yeah. So that's been really key to have that rolled out already. And then the other issue is probably just genuine communication and connection with your peers. And our teams are doing a lot of work or our leadership's doing a lot of things like Zoom happy hours and Zoom treasure hunts and things like that. So that's, that's the biggest issue, I think. Yeah, um, we've been doing a lot of that as well with our team, our community team. We've recently discovered Zoom games you can play. Um, so that's been very fun. <laughs> Um, great. And then Elise, I wanted to direct this question over to you. We kind of discussed it a little bit with what Joanna just mentioned, but um, how does your team currently mitigate, you know, feelings of loneliness, um, depression, and anxiety in this period of uncertainty, especially as you're working from home? Are there anything your team, or is there anything your team is doing right now to kind of brighten the mood? It's a really good question. Um, I think for us, we're, we're a small marketing team, and then I, I'll speak about the marketing team as opposed to the whole organization, but we have these awesome pulse check meetings like three times a week, mm -hmm. and it's a chance for us to really, yes, check in on our priorities, like what's in our way, what do we need assistance with, but also uh, a little bit more nuanced, like we've been using the whole Brene Brown language around what's your permission slip. So what do you need permission for this week? Like I, like, for example, it could be, I really need permission to practice patience. And then that kind of shows everyone where I'm at for the week because it, it matters, especially in today's world. And it also allows us to support one another a bit better. Um, so I think that's been really, really helpful. We also are already naturally close. So we've been having happy hours and taking any advantage we can to send crazy gifts in our, in our communication tool and uh, just check in and make time for one another, uh, not just for work. Uh, and it's working so far. It's going yeah. Well. That's great. Emma, did you want to add anything that um, your team is doing currently to kind of stay connected um, while working from home? I'll echo a lot of 
the things that were already mentioned, um, we do a social lunch via Zoom to stay connected during the workday. But one thing that's been nice for us is as we're trying out so many new digital programs, we've been sharing that with each other as guinea pigs. So before we roll out a fun trivia game to our camp families or our teens, we just need to test it out within the learning department first. So that's been a nice way to keep a pulse on what people are developing and just have a smile and take a break. That's really fun. I love that. And there's so many exciting um, ways that people have kind of changed a normal thing that they do maybe in person, like playing a game of Jeopardy or trivia into a virtual thing, especially as we do that with not only colleagues professionally, but friends as well, um, as we're all kind of currently um, at home uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, wonderful. Well, I am going to go ahead and pop over to our next uh, slide as well. And, um, you know, we discussed how common uh, burnout has become today, but we want to know, like, what's driving that exhaustion? The number one cause of working late worldwide is emails and messages. 41% of people say that they work late to address the constant stream of emails and messages that they get every day. And 34% say chasing approvals increases their working hours. I'd love to talk about managing communications. We talked about some positive aspects of communications, but also we want to know, you know, how do you disconnect, basically. Um, all right, so to start off, I would love to know about the communication tools that um, our teams are using right now, if there's anything in particular. I know my team's really heavily using Slack. Um, Emma, did you want to kick us off with what tools your team is using to communicate? Yeah, our organization is an Office 365 organization, so we've been relying pretty heavily on Microsoft Teams and their cloud-based offerings um, for sharing documents. Mm -hmm. But one of the other managers in our department phrased things perfectly when she said, we should think about each of these different tools as having an analog in the real world. So we're sort of using Teams chat as a like to how you might pop your head into someone's office or cubicle to ask them a question. Email is still email. That's for questions that could take a little time to think about. And I've been enjoying using Asana and all of my weekly check-ins where I can keep track of things that I need to check in about but don't need an immediate response for. Yeah, that's perfect. And that actually goes into kind of how you're using the tools and what um, kind of the rules are around it as well, which I think is really important. Joanna, did you want to pop in and let us know what maybe the American Medical Association is using in terms of communication tools? Yeah, I'm all about the integration landscape. I love that all the tools integrate with each other. I'm a tech nerd. It's awesome. <laughs> so Microsoft Teams has really stepped up their game. I, I really like that platform a lot because we have a, a COVID emergency response team and we have it integrated with Asana. We have a tab with our Asana project on it. We have a Google Analytics dashboard to see how everything is performing. We have the OneDrive, which has all of our assets. It's been a really great tool to use. Mm -hmm. it merges everything together. That's fantastic. Yeah. And um, I think we talked a little bit about integrations. We were talking about how you use Asana. That is something that comes up a lot for our customers. It's just integrations in general. Um, we've, uh, it's just amazing how it can integrate truly with everything and everything now integrates with everything else. There's always somehow you can get something to talk to each other. <laughs> um, great. Elise, did you want to join in as well with the communication tools that um, your team's currently using or your um, organization as well? Yeah, so obviously in the marketing team, we have a lot of tools, but um, primarily it is Asana for all of our project management as well as cross-team collaboration across the entire company. Um, Ring Central, which is uh, our primary communication tool, it's like Slack and Zoom got married. Um, so our video conferencing is through Ring Central, though it's powered by Zoom. And then all of our chatting for exactly what Emma said, you know, if I consider it the like, if I were going to pop by someone's desk, what, what would I say to them? We have an open space concept office. So we really encourage that in normal times, walking, just walking over to someone with a question uh, to mitigate high volume of emails and Asana messages. Um, and then we have Outlook, which is our email client. Uh, Outlook is where it gets crazy. Uh, I, 
I try to use that for external communication outside of the organization and we try to keep everything in Asana. That's definitely been uh, a process for our entire organization. Uh, Asana started as a tool for just the marketing team uh, and got really excited across the whole organization and now everyone uses it. So trying to figure out where communications go is definitely uh, an ongoing challenge and fun thing to discover. But right now it's at least in email, Asana or Ring Central. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always like to tell people this is a little bit of a fun fact about the team at Asana, but we do not use email at all. Uh, no, yeah, no internal communication happens uh, through email. Obviously, I had to email our panelists. <laughs> um, so we do use email for external communications. Um, I And I I relate it back to um, kind of a funny thing when a new person started at Asana and they sent me an email and I immediately reported it to IT because I thought that it was a phishing attempt because I was like, no one sends emails, who's sending this? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we manage all communication in Asana and then also Slack as well. Um, but it's great That's to kind of- That's my dream state. That's my dream yeah. state. We'll get it's, there. We'll get it's there. It's nice, <laughs> searchable, easy to find. I'm like, yes, I love it. <laughs> Um, all right. And then I wanted to dive in a little bit as well about kind of availability, especially right now. Uh, I find myself kind of waking up and immediately jumping online uh, the second that I open my eyes. Uh, how are you all kind of managing availability? Are you always on, sometimes on, only during work hours? Um, is there something in between? And how do you kind of communicate that as well? Um, we can start with Emma if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I've been pretty much sticking to my usual work hours. One way I try to bookend my day is to go for a walk at the end of the day. It helps me get out and see a little bit of nature, reconnect to why we're doing this environmental education, but it also prompts me to end the day and close my screen. Um, but of course, an exception for us is with some of our digital programs, we're needing to offer things in the evening or on the weekends just to reach especially our teen audiences. But working from home provides a lot of flexibility for that. Like my team can run a program on a Saturday without having to get to the zoo and spend half or all of their day there. It's a little easier to do those off hours programs. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I didn't actually think about that, that there is kind of a lot of fle like flexing that you have to do particularly, particularly to bring those programs to people, um, especially on weekends when you're talking about that. Um, that's great to know. Elise, um, does, is your team also kind of have some sort of, um, you know, uh, working schedule or are you kind of always on what's availability look like at um, American Marketing Association? Sometimes I feel like it's always on, but it's yeah. not, that is not encouraged to be clear. <laughs> um, I think, I mean, we do have like our regular office hours. We also have, you know, team members managing families uh, that might be working at different hours. So it's really on the earnest of the individual to be available during the day for meetings as needed and get your work done when you can. Um, I think it's the power of notification settings. Uh, I don't actually have any notifications for email on my phone. That's always been a very uh, powerful tool, uh, even in the past, for managing my time wisely. Um, I have Ring Central notifications right now to help when other when other team members at our organization are working during different hours. If I can answer it quickly, and I don't have Asana on my phone, um, so I feel like I really log in in the morning do my work, log out of my computer. And then, and then it's just like on an as needed basis. And we still have events on the weekends and we just had one last weekend where we were all tuned in on Saturday. So we're trying, we're doing, yeah. but we really do honor the, the balance of life and work at AMA, which is helpful that that's just part of our DNA as an organization. So now it's just making sure your tools match that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elise, that's actually a really good segue into my next question, which is kind of avoiding overwhelm. You mentioned that you kind of take some things off of your phone. You really watch those notifications. Mm -hmm. Joanne, I would love to ask about the American Medical Association and particularly kind of avoiding the communications overwhelm, especially as you're talking about something as important as like COVID response monitoring. Um, how do you deal with that and how, or how, you're, how is your team dealing with that? So we have like our social team and content team, they work on shifts now, so, but they do work 
around the clock, it feels like. And we have FYI fatigue where everyone gets FYI on everything and then <laughs> real messages get missed. So we've had some really good success. We moved the legal team over to Asana, which I felt like was a big win to get the legal team on. So they they post all their policy updates out there. So they're not updating the same update for like three different business units. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really big win. Just getting everybody to check the boards on Asana for updates instead of individual updates. Cuts yeah. down email traffic. That's, I can only imagine, especially just in general, like sharing with so many different groups, it can be um, kind of intense, I'm sure for your legal team too, to have to post it in like five different places each time. So saving time all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Great. Um, well, shifting from communications, I want to talk about um, meetings as well. Um, so aside from that, we're all still doing meetings now, maybe virtually, or maybe before we were still doing our meetings virtually. Um, according to the Anatomy of Work survey, nearly two thirds of meetings that folks are participating in, they deem unnecessary. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, <laughs> um, but I can definitely understand that. Um, annually, imagine how much time we are spending in pointless meetings. Connection is really important, but making sure meetings are worthwhile is critical, especially in the time of remote working when it can feel really easy to kind of overwhelm ourselves with meetings and check-ins. Um, I would love to talk about strategies for improving meeting culture with our panelists right now as well. Um, I would love to know, Emma, how, um, is you, how are you and your team structuring um, your time to work on your priority work, especially just, um, you know, kind of keeping things out of meetings and everything like that. How do you, how do you structure priority work? Yeah, because we're constantly sort of iterating and developing new programs, being in touch with our priorities is really important. We want to avoid going too far down a path in a program that might not meet the needs of our audience or meet the zoo's mission. Um, so we, after a few years have developed a pretty solid process of that design iteration where we start by discovering what prior what existing programs are out there then we move to a listening phase where we gather feedback from our audiences then we have a pitch phase where we bring um, more ideas than are necessary for a given program or project and then we use a rubric to evaluate um, how feasible the different programs might be and how much impact they could have. And that's been a great consensus building tool for all of us. It sort of eliminates anyone's hurt feelings about, oh, I had a great idea for this program and it didn't get the green light, um, as well as it avoids any bias we might have. Like we have certain people who love certain species like birds or butterflies, but we can't always be educating about those things. So that rubric has been essential for us in determining what to move forward on. And then in terms of how to keep meetings about those projects productive, it really is Asana. Adding stuff before the meeting helps me know what points my team members have questions about so I can come with the necessary answers and documents. And then the key for us has been assigning people and due dates for every task, because if it isn't assigned to a person, it just floats and then gets forgotten about. So we use the end of our meeting time for that too. Yeah, that's something we talk about a lot during workshops as well for the Asana Together World Tour. Um, and when people, you know, are asking us, like, how do I get people in Asana? How do I get them kind of moving and grooving in Asana? It's assign those people to tasks, assign due dates for when they're due. It can always be changed. Um, but just making sure people have action to take on things can be um, a huge game changer, especially when you're talking about meetings as well. Um, wonderful. Joanna, I would love to ask you this one. We have good meetings, there are useful meetings, and there are bad meetings that can feel like a waste of everyone's time. I would love to know how you make sure that your team or just your team in general ensures that you're having more good meetings than bad meetings um, on a daily basis or weekly basis. So with all the tools that are out there, I don't think a team meeting should be on operations. For example, if you're launching an email, it shouldn't be like, was your copy ready? That should be in a task and a ticket. Mm -hmm. And I was asked to help out this 
group that had a daily stand-up meeting with 15 people when I first started at the AMA, it was a VP, four directors. It was a really expensive meeting. And once I listened to them, I realized that it was just a status meeting because they didn't know where any of their projects were. And so I took that as an opportunity to pilot Asana, got myself a few power users and rolled it out. And after a few months, they adopted it and the meeting was cut down to seven people, three times a week where they only talk about strategy. And that's how meetings should be. <laughs> that's I'm really proud of that. <laughs> yeah, that is really great. Um, yes, oh my gosh, I wanna uh, record that, write it down and send it out to everyone. <laughs> that's exactly how meetings should be. Um, I would love to know as well about kind of regular meetings that you're, you're having. Joanna gave actually a really great example of um, kind of a regular meeting that she was actually able to cut down. But um, Elise, are there any regular meetings that your team is having kind of weekly and managing those? Oh, you're on mute. Uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, the dog was barking, so I had muted. Um, we have three times a week, uh, starting in the morning, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We call them a pulse check. Uh, there are a lot of things happening in Asana. The problem is we touch everything at the organization, and it's just too many balls in the air. So this helps us check on our priorities, check in as a team. Um, but it's very structured. Uh, it's very clear what our time commitment is, what you're supposed to come prepared to share. Uh, and I think that that's what makes it successful. Um, Plus, it's just good for the culture of our team. We also have like town halls. Uh, we're doing them every other week right now across the entire organization. And that's the way our leadership keeps us updated on how things are moving. Uh, what's our financial outlook? What are major changes that are coming down the pipeline? Um, and then I'll just be honest, as the marketing team, we have a lot of meetings, many of them. <laughs> Many with room for improvement, uh, many that are lovely, and we've found just adding clear structure. So one of my things is I don't call a meeting if I, if I don't spend at least that amount of time at the meeting is preparing for it. So who's required to attend, who's optional, what's the actual agenda, what am I trying to achieve, what does success look like from this meeting? Um, and when we have that in place, it goes really well. And when we don't, then it, then it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, and, you know, that kind of, t that chaos, everything like that, it's a kind of nice um, way to segue into just burnout as well as we talk about that. Um, Emma, I wanted to ask you and Elise as well about kind of promoting balance and avoiding burnout. It seems interesting to ask that, especially at the Lincoln Park Zoo, and you've been there for seven years. Um, so it's, you know, ha that's, a, that's a long time to be at an organization as well. How are, how are you promoting balance for your team and just avoiding burnout in general too? Yeah, the, um, the ability to always be working on new programs really helps with that. Nothing ends up feeling um, too passive for too long. Um, we have a saying at the zoo, there's a goat yard down at our farm in the zoo. And I know the animal keepers there always, um, when they have to bring in new goats, they try to leave a few old goats in the yard to show the new goats the way around. Um, if you bring in all new goats at once, it's chaos. They are social creatures and they need to learn from each other. So we try to do the same with programs. Um, we don't wipe the slate clean and start with five brand new programs. We try to keep a few continuing um, into their second or third year, really like polishing them up and working out all the kinks at the same time that we're introducing a few new to the program suite. And the calendar really helps there. We run a lot of programs based on the school year or in the summers or on Saturdays. So I try to keep my eye on um, sort of a heat map of what everyone's workload is to not add all the new programs in the summer. Maybe we, we might save them for the school year instead. Yeah, that's great. And honestly, I think you just coined a new goat analogy. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to use it in my life. <laughs> yeah, we, but, if we're ever feeling overwhelmed, we say like, too many new goats. Too many new goats. goats. <laughs> oh my gosh, my manager is watching right now and I'm definitely going to use that in our team meetings. <laughs> um, wonderful. Elise, I would love to also hear from you about just avoiding burnout and promoting balance within your team as well. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'll talk more maybe about like the individual perspective. I mean, our team is very agile. Mm -hmm. There's 
never not a new project. There's never a lack of projects. Um, <laughs> those are, sorry, dog. Those are definitely not problems that we face. So I think it's about uh, taking care of yourself so that you can continue, uh, continue forward with creativity, with patience. Uh, and for us, we really promote a culture of you do what you need to do. If you need to go for a walk, go for a walk. Um, if you, same thing at work. If you need to uh, take a mental health day, you have the ability to take a mental health day to realign. Um, I personally love dance parties during the day and I find that uh, I am a dancer. So if I don't dance during the day, I'm definitely gonna be burned out and stressed. If I'm staring at a screen for the entire day, juggling too many things at once, I'm gonna be burned out by the end of the day. So really uh, finding new ways in this digital world to separate yourself from your screen, um, to take the time that you need. And we really put it on the earnest of the individual to take that time as needed. Yeah. Um, it's working so far. Yeah, well, that's a great. <laughs> I think it's a good thing to kind of, you know, reiterate as many times as possible. It's just, you know, find your own balance and take the time that you need. It's important. I highly recommend the one song dance party. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to get up and move around. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Great. Um, so I'm going to jump into kind of a new topic now, uh, you, uh, particularly around setting your team up for success. So 83% of knowledge workers say that their team isn't as efficient as it could be, simply because they do not have the right processes in place. But we have seen that teams at organizations that have designed for efficiency are three times more likely to meet their goals and actually be proud of their output as well. I would love to know a little bit about how our panelists are setting their teams up for success. And we're also getting closer to the Q&A as well. So I would like to remind everyone to um, input any questions you might have for our panelists in the Q&A. We'll have a little bit of time at the end to get a couple of those through as well. Awesome. Um, so when we're talking about setting your team up for success, um, we heard from Emma already with the Lincoln Park Zoo and how they kind of prioritize work and do all of that. But we also know that efficiency doesn't just happen. Joanna, I would love to ask you about strategies that you have put in place um, to help your team be more efficient and effective or strategies that your whole team has put in place just to be more efficient. Oh, yeah. I'll go deep on this one. So uh, you'll see in a later slide, our news team board that we use. So what I did was I met with every single person on the news team and the email team, and I mapped out their process step by step by step. Like then I emailed the editor, that granular. And then I created a current state and a future state. And then using the future state, I built out a template for the news team to work on, for the email team to work on. And then from there, they took it and use it and they've iterated on it ever since then. And it's been so awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, and we're gonna yeah. see that slide in um, a few minutes as well um, that you kind of screenshotted that work process as well. Um, yeah. So that'll be great to kind of show our audience too. Um, Elise, uh, what does your team do to make sure that everyone's working on the right things and not duplicating efforts in particular, which can always be a struggle? Yeah, well, simply put, it's in Asana. So <laughs> <laughs> Asana helps us define who the team lead is on everything and what the individual tasks are for each person. Um, I don't actually find that there's too much overlap on our team. Uh, I really do think that's because our marketing team has been working in Asana now for just about three years since mm -hmm. I started at Amy. Um, that really helps us make, be clear on what everyone's doing, make sure that there's no holes and quickly identify holes if we don't know who's in charge of that. We also have this incredible grid that our director put together that really defines who, who the natural project lead is for each, each individual project as well as specialty. And so when we don't know where to go, you match it on the grid and we go, okay, well, so I'm gonna be the team lead for the new virtual training and I'm going to consult our SEO expert on how to go forward building that landing page. So it makes it really clear and concise and simple. It's also a great way to communicate with the rest of the staff at the organization as to who is handling what. Um, overlap is, I guess, natural at any point in time, but mostly we try to keep the rule of like one to two people on our team on a project at a time. Yeah. Otherwise we have too much. Yeah. Um, and Emma, we, we already heard about how uh, your team goes about kind of uh, 
deciding on priorities, making sure that voices are heard and not all programs are about butterflies as well. Although we wish that they were. <laughs> we love butterflies. Um, I would love to know um, if uh, priorities ever shift at Lincoln Park Zoo and how your team handles that. So maybe something that's already put in place, but now you need to change it up. Has that ever happened? Yeah, well, right now is a great example of that. We had such a solid plan heading into the summer for employing teens and doing job training, and we're just not able to do that right now. Um, so we are shifting our focus um, and we are going through that four stage iterative process right now in terms of thinking about like what are meaningful opportunities we can still offer teens that might only take an hour of their time a week as opposed to the 30 hours we're able to spend with them. So we're looking at how to condense that information. But because we have that process in place, everyone sort of knows the drill by now. So I'm able to just say like, okay, we'll, we'll be having our pitch meeting in three weeks. So use this time to gather those ideas. And I think that's really helped mitigate some of the panic that everyone, including me, might otherwise be feeling about like, what do you mean we can't run our usual programs? Yeah, absolutely. And we're doing that currently with this tour as well as we've shifted everything virtual. Um, it's been a very interesting experience and I'm sure all of our panelists can relate to just in general shifting everything. <laughs> it's, it's very intense. Um, great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and change gears. We talked about this a little bit already, but I would love to go ahead and quickly chat about tools before we give some examples of your asanas for our uh, guests today. Um, so we talked a little bit about this already. Um, Elise, you said that your the tools that you're using right now, aside from Asana, are Ring Central, correct? And then Outlook, right? Yeah, also Google Drive, which oh, is okay. where all of our file storage is. I think I just didn't mention it earlier. Um, and then many, many others. I can go down the list. Yeah. <laughs> are, there, are there any other big ones? Like Joanna talked a lot about integrations. Are you using any integrations as well to manage work? Yeah, so we have like Salesforce and WordPress and our Pardot, Pardot for all of our email marketing and all of that is integrated. We use Buffer to integrate all of our social media channels. Um, as far as like communication integration, if it doesn't talk, use Zapier. Uh, if it doesn't talk with the tool that you're looking for. Um, but there's, I think, natural to any marketing team, there's a million different, uh, different systems that we use. Yeah. That's fantastic. And Joanna, you talked about um, Microsoft Teams and how you integrate um, with Asana as well. Um, when you're looking to kind of bring on a new tool with the American Medical Association or another teammate is, how do you guys decide if it's worth it or not? So I look at a few things. The main thing is adoption. We had a whole task management tool set when I started at the AMA, but no one understood how to use it. It was a really powerful tool, but it didn't matter because no one used it. So what I do is I look at different tools. I like Asana because it reminded me of Facebook with the likes and you have to pilot it on your most tech savvy group and your least tech savvy group because you need people to be able to feel empowered to run with the tool. The worst thing is if you roll out a process and then no one touches it for three years, we don't know how to use the tool. And so we've had really good luck with that with Asana. So it's pretty awesome. That's fantastic. Um, and now, since we're already chatting with you, Joanna, I would love to go ahead and direct to your Asana screenshot that you shared with us about this process. And just to put kind of a picture to the process you described earlier, um, uh, can you describe this one again, the news editorial calendar that you are uh, using in Asana? Yeah, this one is so awesome because we have four teams working together. We've got content creation, which, which is the news team writing their articles and editing. We've got image creation, which is our creative group picking an image for the articles. We've got the web ops team who builds out the article on the page. We've got, and we have the taxonomy team who tags everything. And that's four different teams that we're working over email for every single article that gets published. And we publish a lot of articles. So it's wow. been a really big time saver. And if someone's out sick, it's okay. It's so awesome. Yeah. And that right hand pane is actually how you've um, organized subtasks within a single task, which I absolutely love. I use sections actually a lot in my subtasks. There are some people who love subtasks, some people who do not love subtasks. So 
I completely understand if you're not a subtask lover, but I do love how you laid this out. It's uh, really, really great. Awesome. I'm going to jump over to Emma at the Lincoln Park Zoo. Do you want to tell us about this beautiful board project that you've built out? Yeah, so we definitely, as the other panelists have mentioned, love using templates for events. We love using Asana for meeting agendas, but I wanted to show a more creative use too that is hot off the presses, um, which is, has to do with brainstorming for those new programs we're working on developing. Um, I love that everyone can contribute to a board like this and I'm able to see who added which things. But one question we've been asking ourselves in addition to how can we take our programs virtual is how can we reach people who don't have devices or don't have reliable internet access? And the answer is sidewalk chalk. I've been super impressed by my Instagram feed and how creative everyone is. And if there's one thing we all have access to, it's the sidewalk outside of our home. So we're currently mobilizing a chalk walk campaign where all the zoo educators We'll get some chalk, head out, and then with a common theme, we'll be creating art. So we were using this board, um, and I love that I could drop in some pictures to show what I was envisioning, because text can be a little hard for a topic like this. Um, and we were also brainstorming just where could we create the artwork, um, and we have the artist tab column for people to sign up to do only text or text and drawing. I'm text only, no one wants to see my drawings <laughs> yet. I love um, it. That's great. And it's a, it's a nice way to use a board project as well with those images. That's the perfect, perfect use of a board. Wonderful. And then Elise, do you want to talk to us about this FY20 marketing content calendar? It looks like it's a little bit um, blurry on my screen, which I'm so sorry, but. That's okay. Um, it's a, so it's a content calendar for this week long event that we have annually called Marketing Week. It's a beautiful celebration of all things marketing. Um, it is a major uh, cross organization collaboration. There is a separate project that handles all of the planning. Um, this is for the actual calendar for the week of. So we have things going out every single day, designated times of the day on all of the various channels. And that ranges from social channels to website. And this was how we organized uh, what channel, what audience it was for, um, giving us a snapshot of what time of day so that we can make sure that we have everything spread out evenly throughout each day and throughout the entire week. The process of it, is it in draft mode? Is there a problem that's holding it up? Is it scheduled already? Uh, what team is responsible for it? Uh, we, of course, use the power of subtasks that helps us with the actual uh, actual work that needs to be done to a, to achieve this content item. Uh, but this was literally the only way. I can't imagine looking at a, an Excel document to manage 20 to 30 pieces of content going out on a daily basis during this event. So this was a really, really great tool that we implemented. Um, Absolutely. And now we can copy it and <laughs> use it to do marketing week this year, make updates, uh, but we can see a beautiful record of everything that we did last year and what didn't go out due to whatever hold up. These are your old goats, as Emma said. <laughs> and then you can add new goats. <laughs> you, won't, you won't recreate the wheel if you've got it. Work with it. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and jump over to Q&A, and we have time for a couple Q&A questions before we wrap things up. So um, I'm going to jump in really quick. Uh, let's go ahead and ask this question um, to Elise. What are the most common templates you use for your various teams in, um, when you're working with them? What are those? Uh, this is from Debbie, by the way, as well. Hi, Debbie. Um, so I've actually made our own templates now. Uh, I mean, we do have agenda templates, but we don't, we more have like a task and a major project that tracks the agenda of a meeting. Uh, we have event templates. That's been major for our marketing team. Uh, they, they might all, the, the individual items might differ a little bit from event to event, but I'm not recreating the wheel each time. So I, I start with a template and then build it out from there. Um, we use content calendar templates. Um, we also, the fields, the custom fields, start with those as templates and adapt as needed. So status of a project um, is a really big one that we see. 
great. That's perfect. Um, and then we have two other questions that kind of talk about pivoting. So I'm going to try and combine them. Also, I apologize if I butcher this a little bit. Um, we can go ahead and have Joanna chat about this one. But um, particularly, how do you use Asana to help with changing priorities or pivoting, especially when you're talking about working from home during this extra stressful time around COVID? <laughs> Um, we have a consolidated board, like I mentioned before, where all teams are um, accessing, um, well, what am I trying to say? So we have our main COVID board where uh, different teams feed into the main project. Mm -hmm. And something that's really important is our um, service center team. They field all of our questions coming in from doctors that see our videos we're putting out, they see our emails we're putting out, and they have to see what's going out. So they're able to reference this board and see what is published and what is put aside so they can be prepared for any questions that come in. So I think it's a board where you can check in a calendar view to see actually what was launched or what is launching. Yeah, that's hugely helpful, especially just making sure everyone knows what's going out when it went out. And, you know, just as those questions roll in, that makes complete Before sense. it goes out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, before it goes out. <laughs> <laughs> get prepared. Um, yeah. That's great. And then um, Emma, you talked as well about pivoting um, all of your work uh, at the Lincoln Park Zoo, especially as everything has gone remote um, with a very in-person workplace. Um, how did you use Asana to kind of change out um, uh, or pivot the work that you were doing? I think you talked about this a little bit, but if you could reiterate. Yeah, I would say two key things that were important for us was using boards for brainstorming. Like you don't need to feel that something needs to be set in stone before you put it in Asana. Certainly everything should go in Asana, but it's okay to use that as a space to gather ideas and filter through them later. Um, we're having lots of ideas now that might be useful even when we do resume in-person programs again. Um, and we want to keep track of that and not lose it in all of this chaos. So it's a great record for any changes that we're making. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. We um, have two minutes left, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up. But a huge round of applause to our panelists. Go ahead and give yourselves a quick clap. <laughs> you did a great job. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and to wrap things up, I just want to go ahead and tell our attendees about a few things that they get for coming to this as well. We're going to be having um, four workshops for our Chicago audience, but of course anyone is welcome to join. I believe um, one of them is actually already sold out. That's our introduction to Asana workshop, but they will be over the course of tomorrow and Friday um, at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Chicago time or central time. Uh, these workshops are our introduction to a Asana workshop. We have a Asana premium workshop, an Asana business workshop, as well as a how to adopt Asana workshop, which is one of our newest ones that we offer. A lot of people have questions around adoption, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, we, oops, sorry. Uh, we also heard some great ideas today, and I want to make sure everyone puts them to work. Um, to make Asana easier, you can download and print our keyboard shortcut cards. It's a handy reference to keep on your desk, and there is a link right there to be able to download it. You can also feel free to screenshot this slide too, but we will be sending the recording if you miss this. Um, we also offer the longest trial because you've attended this uh, virtual panel discussion, and it's a 90-day free trial of Asana premium or business, if you would like to go ahead and try it out, maybe see if it's a good fit for your team. Maybe you got inspired by all of the amazing ideas that came from our panelists today. You can do so by uh, visiting that link. And then of course, continue the conversation. We would love to hear from you on our incredible forum, which is managed by one of my teammates actually. And um, it's a great place to kind of ask questions, learn about Asana, get ideas for how to use it as well from other people. Of course, uh, we're bringing this all to you today um, through Asana Together. And Asana Together is our community program. I would love to invite everyone who's joined us as an attendee today to join um, our ambassador program. You get insider access to everything about Asana. You'll join uh, webinars and news. You get notice about launches before they happen. And you also get an opportunity to give product feedback. We do um, release a lot at Asana, of course, and um, we would love to tell people about it before they, it happens and then also get feedback. 
back to. You also get exclusive Asana swag. Of course, everyone loves those Yetis and unicorns that fly across your screen. You might as well outfit your entire body in them. Um, so we would love to give you that swag if you'd like to join. And then of course, just meet other Asana fans, other productivity lovers around the world. Um, we can all relate. Uh, so definitely join. You can go to asana.com slash community or just easily type in asa.na slash ambassador. All right, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and conclude today's panel discussion at 11.01, I'm one minute over, dang it. <laughs> but thank you so much again for joining us and a huge thank you to our panelists. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>